Hey, hey, what's up guys? Raga here from Akite, and today we're gonna do an in-depth review on the 2020 Duotone Neo. So, back in the summer, Blake Olson and I had the chance to test all the 2020 gear in Tarifa, and we decided to tag team this video, so we're gonna jump back and forth between the two of us and just give the different perspectives. Hey, what's up guys? This is Blake from Mackay Porting here, and today Rigo and I are gonna be doing a review on the 2020 Duotone Neo. Now in years past, we've actually done quite a few videos on the Neo, and we always kind of promoted it as one of the wave kites that works awesome as an all-around kite because it's so powerful and it has so much low end for a wave kite. But I kind of realized that in a way we've almost done this kite an injustice because it's actually an incredibly good wave kite in itself. So I wanted to focus on that aspect of the kite and give you everything you need to know. As always guys, click that eye icon in the upper right hand corner of your screen. That will open a new tab to our knowledge center where you can read the full written review after you finish this video. We're making a point to try to keep our videos a little bit shorter, so we'll go into more detail in the written blog and you can see everything that I wrote and everything that Blake wrote about testing this kite over the years. And aside from this written review, we spent the last three years building the largest collection of kiteboarding knowledge online. So we have trick tips, gear reviews, a foil boarding knowledge center, and a travel guide. So give that a click and check out all of our other articles and videos after you finish this video. So you're thinking of picking up a Neo. That tells me a couple things about you. Chances are you're dedicated to your discipline. You'd probably choose a surfboard over a twin tip any day. Or maybe you just live somewhere with conditions that are always wavy and that's the hand you've been dealt at your local beach. Or you might just be that rider who's getting bored of jumping and looking for something new to progress in like the waves. Lastly, and most likely, you're someone who likes to do it all, but you don't want to make any compromises when it comes to your wave riding. Odds are, you've been looking at a range of wave kites. Some that claim to be pretty good in the waves, some that are dedicated wave kites, and one thing's for sure, I've never encountered a wave kite that has this unique blend of characteristics. So the aim of this video is to help you decide if the unique characteristics of this kite are right for you. And something that I've noticed in the last few years after doing more and more write-ups and reviews on all the different brands lineups is everybody seems to have a slightly different approach, but when it comes to Duotones kites, they usually step out of the box with their design. So while a lot of the other wave kites are somewhat similar, the Neo definitely fits into a category of its own as far as wave kites go. The first point that I'd like to cover with the Neo is the wind range. And this is an area where immediately this kite's going to stand out from all of the other wave kites. It has a ton of low end for size, and if you've done any research on the kite, you know that almost everybody recommends sizing down on the Neo. And uh, what this is, is wave kites, they tend to have been designed to have more high end power, so when you drop in on a wave, that kite's not gonna pull you off of the wave. But the Neo, it's a very, very grunty kite, so you absolutely have to size down because you will get overpowered faster than you think. Initially, this almost sounds like a disadvantage, but it really allows you to do a couple of different things. So when you have a more powerful, smaller kite, you can actually be more reactive with your kite, which is a benefit in the waves. It's good to be able to have that control and uh, for example, if you're in onshore waves, you're gonna be moving that kite a lot from one side of the wind window to the other as you're doing turns on the waves. And at the end of the day, in the waves, having a smaller, more reactive kite is a huge advantage. So being able to size down and get the same amount of power out of say like a, uh, a nine meter as opposed to a uh, 10 or 11 of another wave kite is a bit of an advantage because you're gonna have a more reactive kite. And as well, uh, I've really come to appreciate the low end grunt of the Neo. So it almost sounds like having all of that low end would be an issue, but like all the other wave kites, the Neo, you can sheet out and dump all the power from the kite. So you're not gonna get pulled off the wave. You don't have to worry about the kite being overbearing and kind of taking away from your surf experience. But it's really nice because let's say for example, you're riding in side on conditions and you catch a series of waves and you find yourself a half a mile, a quarter mile from your starting point and you need to get back upwind to where you can land your kite or with your crew of friends and sometimes it can actually be challenging to get back upwind on some kites that have less power and I found in my experience after testing all the wave kites that we carry that with the Neo it's the easiest kite for me to get back upwind 
And that's kind of one of the funny things about kite surfing in the waves is I always find that uh, as I'm making my way back upwind, I always seem to come across the best wave. So of course you have to catch that wave and then before you know it, you're way further down than you expected. And with the Neo, I've always had an easier time getting back upwind and uh, I feel pretty good about you know taking those waves because I know that I'm going to actually get back to where I started with very little work on my end. Now another weird little benefit that I found about the low end of the Neo is sometimes in onshore conditions, uh, depending on your beach, but where we ride, a lot of times when we're coming in and onshore, the current is actually kind of going in towards the shore, and what happens is it actually takes a good deal of power out of the kite, which is a good thing when you're surfing, but when you're trying to get out past the shore break, it really helps to have that little extra low end to really charge through and get past that shore break. And that's something that has been noticeable for me when taking a Neo compared to another kite that might not quite match its low end. For example, when I'm out on the dice or another wave kite that's uh, got more high end, it's very noticeable having that little extra power with the Neo. And you know, as well, the extra power is what's made it a very popular free ride kite. So I said that I was gonna focus on the waves, but I, I do have to mention that when you do have a faster, more powerful kite, it does make for a great free ride kite because you can jump, you have the grunt, you still have that smaller kite to work, and so the low end that you get from this kite does make it stand out in that sense. So as far as using the Neo for free ride, the huge advantage there is it has that low end that other wave kites lack. Hey, what's up guys? This is Blake from Mac Kiteboarding here and today Rigo and I are going to be doing a review on the 2020 Duotone Neo. My first impression of this Neo was I was very pleasantly surprised. Um, I was shocked actually because I've always ridden like big air, kind of big hang time, freestyle, free rod kites. I've, FX was my main kite for many years. But um, after riding this Neo, I definitely think that I'm gonna be switching over to at least one kite in my quiver being a wave specific kite. Just because I'd never really thought about it before. You know, I like jumping as high as possible, doing all these things. But when you actually have a wave kite that's designed to pull in and dump power so quickly, especially for the foil, which is what I mostly rode it on. Um, I was just able to do tricks that I had never done before, and I just felt so comfortable and everything was so easy that I was really surprised. I don't even know how to put it. It's just, it flies so well and it's so smooth, and like, if you want to dump the power and not have the kite pull you, you just push that bar out and you lose all the power instantaneously. And then pull it back in and catch it when you want to. You can use that to your advantage for foiling, whether it be doing tricks or maneuvers and everything. And I just really liked it and had a great time um, foiling on the Neo. So Rago's going to give you a little more perspective. He was riding a surfboard quite a bit as well. So he's kind of more the surfing aspect, whereas I'm more the foiling aspect. But we did get to carve some waves on it and had a really good time. So let's talk about the bar pressure and feel. And this is something that's really unique about the Neo. And uh, being a wave kite with so much low end, when you're sheeted in, the kite, it is a moderate bar pressure and it's very direct. And as you sheet out, almost like a dimmer switch, that power starts to dump. And as you get all the way out, you dump all the power out of the kite and the bar pressure starts to feel a bit lighter. And while you still have full control and a bit of feedback, it just takes on some different characteristics. So another really useful benefit of the Neo is you can really fine tune the kite to whatever style you're doing and uh, the conditions you're facing for that day. So if you want to use the kite for a strapless freestyle, strapless air, or even free ride like I talked about, you can really fine tune it for that specifically. And if you're going into the waves, you can set it for maximum drift and really find that feedback from the bar that suits your needs. So one huge thing that stood out to me on the Neo is uh, it really took me aback because lately I've been riding a lot of crossover kites and these usually work good in the waves, you know, like the Dice for example, you can ride the waves really well with that kite and I've mentioned that you have to be very interactive, you're always working the kite and it's a strange thing with a kite like the Neo, when you drop in, the kite can actually even drift a bit behind you and then it will drift along with you and it's a very strange thing uh, not having to really give any feedback to the kite and you can, which I mentioned when you sheet out and take that power out, the kite still responds. And even more unique is even when the kite's drifting and your lines are somewhat slacked, 
it still has some response. And this is really where the magic of the Neo or any other wave kite comes in, is they drift. And we talk about this a lot, and I think sometimes people don't really realize what a big difference this makes in the waves, because you can really focus on the wave, you can focus on the surfboard, it's going to feel like surfing, and you don't have to worry about the kite. And the difference is night and day when you're crossing over from all around kite, a crossover kite, and you're riding specifically in wave conditions. Wave kites make it such a different experience, and if you are interested in, say, doing maybe 60% waves, 40% twin tip, you definitely want to go for a wave kite, whether it's the Neo or any, any other wave kite, because it's going to make all that much more difference in the conditions that you're riding in and the experience that you have in the waves. So let's talk about the waves. And obviously, this is where the Neo stands out as a wave kite. It's going to perform better in the waves. And the reason for this is you're going to see a lot of other kites like the Dice, the Evo, all the other all-around kites. And for the most part, when it's side shore or even side off, these kites perform really well on the waves because you can be very interactive with them and they work well for the conditions. But once you start getting more into side-on conditions and onshore conditions, the wave kites really start to stand out because you can fine tune them specifically for those conditions. And as well, the drift is gonna make all the difference in the world because you will always be paying attention to another kite. You always try to keep a mild edge you know, you have a bit of tension in the lines, you're working the kite, you're always paying attention to it, and it's just one more thing to think about. But with a wave kite, when you drop in, you don't need to think about the kite. It's completely out of the picture. The kite just does what it needs to do. So it's really cool because you can actually go surfing with a wave kite. You can really focus on your board, focus on your edging, focus on that bottom turn, try surf tricks, and you're not worried about your kite you can rest assured that the kite is just going to sit there and drift along and let you progress as a wave rider and focus on what really matters. So that's really the most standout thing here. So in summary here guys, the Neo really is a kite that fits in a category of its own. A lot of the other kites in the lineup, you know, they do have some crossovers and similarities with a lot of the other kites, like the Dice. You know, it fits pretty nicely in a box with uh, other crossover kites. Same thing with the Evo. If it's fairly nicely into a box, obviously Duotone has their own little unique things, and as well as all the other brands, have their own little unique things that make the kite separate. But the Neo really stands out uh, as far as the wave category. And what this really comes down to is the low end power on the kite, the gradual decrease in the power, like a dimmer switch, and the ability to ride a much smaller, more reactive kite when you're going out. And that really makes all the difference in the world with the wave experience. So beyond that, you can still expect all the same benefits, the amazing drift that makes it a good wave kite, customization that makes it a great wave kite. So the one thing that really makes the Neo stand out is that low end power. So you can size down and then, um, you know, take the advantages of having a grunty kite to get out past the shore break, to get back upwind, you know, whatever reasons you can think of that you might want that low end. And then when you're on the waves, you can dump all that power and treat it just like another wave kite. So hey, I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, this has been Raga.